Alright, here we go. Hello, YouTube. This is the DBT Gamer Show. And this is episode 8. Today, I will be reviewing a very, very crap game. A game that, when I first played it, I quite liked it, but as I played it, it got worse and worse and worse. The name of this game is none of them spectrobes. This is first. This is the game. Only available on Nintendo DS. And this is not even my copy. I have bought this game with a friend called Stephen Dickinson. Because I used to have this game, but it was so, so bad, I decided to sell it. That's what games get if, it, if they're messing around with me. They get sold and they all get picked back, and most they don't pick, get picked back when you're in second chance. This game is pretty awful, and in my review, you shall see why. So, let's get started on this review of this crappy game. Right, let's find out my DS. One last time, because I'm not trusting this game again after I've done this review. I am that annoyed with it. Just getting camera into focus, and there we go. Okay, the storyline for this game is pretty simple. Basically, you play as a character called Rallin, who's a member of this intergalactic tri police corporation. And your galaxy is being attacked by this, these evil monsters called the Krull. They're out to destroy every galaxy in the entire universe, so someone's got to stop them. And the only way to destroy these... To destroy these evil aliens, known as the Krull, is by finding the ancient creatures known as Spectrobes. Because basically human members are practically useless, but more about that later. The graphics of this game are rather good. I mean, this game is bad, but the way the graphics look on the DS are pretty good. We start the game, can I continue? Go to the options, or start a new game. That's right, it's only one game save. That's a new bad. That's a bad thing about this game. There is a multiplayer, but you can't access it by the, by, the, by the main menu, you have to go into the game itself. So, I'm going to continue my friend's file, because I currently have start my own file. If I started my own file, my friend would kill me. So, let's load up my, my friend's data. The controls for this game are pretty good. Moving around is just your arrow pad. A lets you talk to things. B just cancel things. Start doesn't do anything. Select doesn't do anything. X is your option screen. Um, R is your scan button. More about that later. And L is your um, status screen. Your status screen basically tells you your your defense, your attack, your power, HP. All that sort of stuff. Also, tells you which spectrobes are in your AM3. Since it's my friend's file, it's very early on in the game. My friend has finished his game already once, and so have I. So. There. Also. Alright. Oops. My bad. Wrong thing. Alright, the gameplay of this game is very similar to Pokemon. Basically, you go around collecting these things called Spectros, but you don't see these Spectros in, in the wild like you would in Pokemon in a, in a grassy area. Yeah, you, you have to dig them up. They're like fossils, really. You have to dig up a fossil of a, of a particular animal. So I'm going to just head outside, and I'm going to try and show you how... Oh, I can't. Right. So I'm just going to... One minute, I'll get there in a minute. Right.
on the bottom screen, when you are selecting which plant to go to, you use a touch pen. So I'm going to select Dacha. Most of the planets have extremely weird names. I mean, some of them are almost impossible to pronounce, so that's a bad thing. Game trailers did review this game earlier on this year, but their review was not very thorough. It was quite misleading, actually. Well, saving your game is, is a pain in the ass as well. You can only save in one place, and that's this green bubble thing. Um, this is a spaceship where you'll obviously live. If you go down with lift, you go to the laboratory. The laboratory is where you can awaken your set jobs and evolve them, basically. This is the multiplayer bit. Basically, you have to find a special item to unlock multiplayer. You can do a versus battle, or, or you can trade stuff. That's that's it. There's also a Wi-Fi capability, but my friend hasn't got that far in the game yet, so I can't so I can't show you that. There's also a password system where you get these little cards with the game, and you input these passwords, which will unlock certain things in the game. These set of things new monsters, or new spectrobes, custom parts, or a lot of or minerals. Minerals are basically food which you feed your spectrobes. Um. Sorry about that. Most of the game is displayed on your bottom screen, which is your touch screen radius. Yes? If you touch your friend that's going around with you, you will also be able to scan the area. This big capsule thing is where you... is where you find out about your cubes, you know, that you found. And this machine here helps you awaken your spectrobes and feed them. Right, this review will be more than two parts because it's such a long game, so I may have to do either a two or three part review. Right, as I was saying, back to the gameplay of this game, I'm going to show you how you collect your spectrum. Basically, you go out into, into the area, and by tapping the R button, it's just sort of like a sonar effect. And you get a little blip on your screen, like a, the blip's coming in, in four colours. Gold, blue, starry, and gold, blue, starry, and um, multicoloured. Right, I've run out of time, so I will continue my review in part two. Until then, see you next time.